Let's get more on Rebel Tech with Ari Zaldam. He's the CEO of Quantum Media Group. Ari, always good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Now, Ari, you and I have spoken about wearable tech a number of times before. In fact, you were the first to discuss a Google Glass bringing one of the prototypes on set. And Ari, you called it correctly. Right. You said it would be a flop. Right. So what can we expect from Google or company parent company Alphabet now? So you have a very, very good memory. So I, <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Um, the industry, obviously, they're not giving up on wearables. I think that there's a lot of, there's still a lot of momentum. There's a lot of money behind it. Um, but there's a lot of wearables that, that people have tried that is not working. I think Google Glass was one of them. But Google's not hanging up their hat, and they're not saying that, hey, this is the end of it. They're going to keep trying. They're going to keep trying different iterations until they get it. What can we expect from Google? I think we're going to start seeing embedded technology, and we're going to start hearing a lot about sensors. And sensors is really is what I call the final mile. It's the ability to be able to collect data and transmit data directly to and from you. So how would that work exactly? So for instance, you mentioned the digestible pill. So right. we're talking about a, a little, little microchip that's embedded on top of the, the medicine or the pill. It's ingested. As you said, it gets sent to the patch. The patch goes ahead and sends the data um, wirelessly or over the internet back to the doctor to be able to monitor the ingestion versus waiting a month or two months until you see the doctor and you actually say, hey, you know, wait, the medicine's not working. So they're able to track it in real time. What are the health complications with this, though? I mean, is it a good idea to be swallowing senses and such? Well, the FDA cleared it. So, I mean, I'm sure, at least on the onset, it does seem a little bit, uh, little bit freakish. Um, but in terms of any health risk, it's, it's down to zero. Well, medical applications seem to be where everything is moving. What are some of the other ways we're going to see this being utilized? I think you're going to see a lot of patient-doctor interactions. So um, after you come back from, after you have a doctor visit, you go home, instead of going back to the doctor a week or two afterwards, the doctor is going to have the ability to be able to correspond with the patient and to be able to transmit data back and forth, almost in a real-time atmosphere. Well, Ari, Apple watches, smart watches, um, as sleek and as fetching as they are, apparently Steve Jobs had envisioned it in order to help gather medical data. Mm -hmm. Is this the big trend that you see going on with the other smart watches as well? I think it's, I think the two sectors, I mean, wearables could go across a whole bunch of different verticals. I'm willing to bet where the opportunities are, are both in medical and in fitness. I think those are the sectors that are really going to get the biggest bang for the buck. Well, Apple Watch recently celebrated its first birthday, um, but it's not ubiquitous yet. It's right. not mainstream. According to Apple's earnings, uh, we saw that it's estimated that 13 to 15 million watches were sold. There's no exact number. It was in the other products category. But what's it going to take to get wearable tech in the, phone, in the form of a smartwatch really mainstream? I think it has to be embedded into the skin. And I think we're probably a couple of years. It definitely sounds very sci-fi-ish. We're probably a couple of years away from that. But I don't see, you know, you have your phone, you have your tablets, you have your laptop. I don't see another device on your wrist actually being very effective. So you're saying the trend is no longer on you, but in you. It's going to be in you, correct. We're still a couple of years away, but the combination of sensors and it embedded in your bloodstream well, is where it's going to be. Well, what else would these sensors be picking up then? Uh, monitoring your body. Um, it could be your, your heart rates. It could be your, your cardio pulse. Um, it, it's really, there's so many health benefits to be able to monitor your body in real time and then communicate back to your doctor. You don't think that there's going to be consumer resistance to this? People found Google Glass obtrusive. Right. This is invasive, quite literally. Huge, huge. And there's, a bit, there's obviously there's a big data concern with it. But obviously with that, there's, there's going to become HIPAA compliance and HIPAA standards. And, able, and there are going to be ways to be able to protect your data. But it's certainly a very, very valid concern, Michelle. Who are the leaders in this field? Right. I mean, Apple is obviously is big in it. Uh, Nike is big in it. Um, uh, and there's a lot of smaller companies, a lot of small innovative companies that are trying to get into the space because they can manipulate a lot quicker than some of these bigger companies. And what is it going to take to convince consumers that they now need to swallow these sensor pills or have a patch that links to something else? I mean, that's going to require a lot of mindset change, wouldn't you say? Right. There's a lot. There's a big learning curve. But if you look back 10, 15 years ago, the concept of online banking and being able to transfer currency and sending and receiving money over, I mean, people wouldn't, wouldn't think about it. Today, you can't, think, uh, you can't think about without it. 
Let's quickly talk about fashion, Ari. As we saw, the Met Gala was uh, where they tried to fuse tech and fashion. Uh, call it tech couture. We saw Marquesa's dress, color-changing LED lights. Yeah. Um, Zach Posen had Claire Danes in an LED Cinderella Lake gown. Is this just gimmicky, or at what level do you think fashion and tech are really going to coincide and be mainstream? I think it's cute. I think it's cute. I think it's funny. I think it's uh, attention getting. Um, but in terms of you know the actual big couture houses getting into fashion and tech, I don't see it at the moment. All right. Well, you did predict a couple of things accurately, so we'll see where you stand on this one. Thank you so much. Ari Zoldan, CEO of Quantum Media Group. If you like what you just saw, follow us on social media and visit our website, cctv-america.com.